Hey, um, so, I wanted to tell my story, how I ended up where I'm at now, hoping it'll inspire somebody to um, make a change and prevent whatever's wrong with them before it's too late. Um, I, <laughs> this might be the lowest I've ever been in my life. And I feel embarrassed because my daughter's looking at me. And um, it's hard to keep my superhero outfit on because she can sense my daughter might is I think my daughter's my kryptonite because <coughs> she knows when something's wrong and sometimes I can't hold her together but um basically what happened I was diagnosed with diabetes in 2005 um it was weird I didn't really understand nothing I was just 25 <coughs> excuse me but um it got worse around a little after my daughter was born it got worse. Well, not worse. It the effects started taking a toll on me to where I had to take short-term disability leave so I could find out what was going on. Um, the first thing was I was starting to get the uh, the tingling in my feet and my eyesight things were starting to get blurry not not bad but I could still drive a four lift and work and do stuff I need to do <laughs> after my dad passed and uh, after my dad passed in 2013 that's when everything went down from hill for me health wise i i never noticed i never knew how bad <coughs> excuse me i didn't i never knew how bad emotions were connected to health therefore me being upset i think it really aggravated everything um me and my ex-wife would get into it and I was at a point where I was just not me I was gone and um my last job was October 2016 I went to work even though I didn't feel good I was working through a tent service I went I loaded the truck I was real slow I wasn't feeling good <clears throat> my ex-wife she worked at the tent service so when I got off she came pick me up and I just sat in the car so she had to get off and um, come to find out I had like a fever of 104 Um, so between October and March, I was just at the house. Didn't know I was going, didn't know what was going on. I just knew I couldn't walk. I could walk, but I would be out of breath in 15 to 30 seconds. <coughs> it's hard for me to sleep. I had to sleep with my back to the wall. 
if I laid down to sleep, I probably would have died because it, it would have sounded like I was drowning. <coughs> I'm sorry about the cough, but unfortunately, it comes with the territory dealing with what I'm dealing with. Um, Ex-wife kept saying, you can go to the doctor. I'm like, no, I'm going to be all right. I'm cool. And then, just one night, I was like, you know what? I can't take it no more. Let's go. Now, this is how bad my legs swole up. I wear a size large in sweats. My ex-wife had to go get me a pair of 2X sweats because I couldn't wear my regular clothes. And even with the 2X sweats, I could not get them past my knees. That's how much fluid I had on me. <coughs> Went to the primary care. He's like, you need to go to the emergency room now. I'm like, okay. This is what I was afraid of. I went. Found out my kidney shut down. Um, so, March, I was in there for about two weeks. I think I almost died twice. Um, they put the catheter right here. I still didn't realize what was going on. Until they told me, hey, you're going to have to be on dialysis indefinitely. Society is like, I always saw the centers, but I never knew what they were. And I'm like, what is that? It's like, you have a lot of fluid on you. You have congestive heart failure. And um, kidney shut down. So we have to get all this fluid off of you. I'm like, okay. Still didn't understand until I started actually going through the process of dialysis. And now it's like, I was fine up until probably mm, probably late 20, mid 2018, 2019. And I was just throwing up all the time. Um, I didn't realize I had gastroparesis. I can't say that word. You know, I didn't know it. I just know I had real bad heartburn. I was throwing up all the time. <clears throat> and I always end up in the hospital. They gave me some weird cocktail to drink. It was like Maalox and Lidocaine and to stop the heartburn. <coughs> but, um, end up having to move back here to where I'm at now. Been here since September of 2020. And things have just progressively been getting worse to where now, in a wheelchair, lost my leg because apparently I had gangrene. Don't know how it happened. But the whole month of September 2023, I'm sorry, I was in the hospital. They had to do three different surgeries to get the gangrene. Because if I didn't, I wouldn't be here. It's still weird. It still feel like my leg is here because of the phantom pain. Um, and now, I sleep a lot. Mainly is due to exhaustion from dialysis, but I'm starting to think it might be depression also. My daughter's here, and I hate she sees me this way. Um, from what I think she can remember, she's always seen me as sick. She's never seen me as well, and I'm embarrassed. And um. 
I know I shouldn't be, but I am. And now my eyesight is getting worse to the point it's like a slow fade like I, I can see somewhat I'm sitting in front of a lamp I can see my hand but it looks like a shadow but it's real it's, oh, it's so hard to explain my other eye, I can't see out of it because of a surgery I had in 2018 at a medical college. They put an oil bubble behind that was supposed to push my retina back into place. And it didn't work. So it's just been like this ever since. I going to be a little vulnerable. I <laughs> honestly, I feel like a I don't like to go out because I know people go stare. And I feel like a, honestly, I feel like a circus freak. And, um, I, I hate that I'm not strong enough like I used to be so I can be strong enough for my daughter but I'm saying all this to get this out because and I'm surprised I did not cry and I'm glad I did so I don't know how I'm going to do this I'm going to have to get help I hate asking for help because I don't like feeling like a burden to people but I'm just going to have to let my pride down and just ask for help. Um, I, I have my days where I'm scared that I'm not going to be able to just completely not see anymore. And I have made music. I used to draw. I used to make t-shirts. And that was my passion. I, I, uh, I still want to get back to doing those things. It's just, it's, it's hard. I'm really trying not to cry. Um, I created a word, and the word is uh, <clears throat> powerability. And the definition I gave that word powerability is spelled P O W E R B I L I T Y. And the definition I gave it is the power to to possess the ability to change any and everything. So. A sister tell me it's okay to be scared sometimes of fear. I don't want to be, but I don't know. I hate being scared. I don't like being here by myself, but I have to. Um, I gotta continue my superhero transformation. I have to. I swear that I will reverse this kidney disease so I can live. I will reverse this diabetes so I'm able to see and get my energy back. I got too much to do to let this defeat me um I'm not asking 
for anything. Just um, <clears throat> if you could think, if you think you could help me on this journey, I would greatly appreciate it. It's weird. I don't know what to eat. I got to figure out how to exercise all over again with one leg. That's going to be a, a challenge, but I'm going to conquer it. Um, God keeps, I keep getting woke up for some reason. Because if I wasn't supposed to be here, I'd have been gone that first time I almost died. So I have to, I have to do this for my daughter and for myself. <coughs> um, if you watch this, thank you. If you can reach out to me, you feel like you can give me some words or just talk or something, let me know. Um, Mama, Nina, Nate, Analia, Kayla, Janaya, and all the rest of my family and friends, I thank you for the support I've gotten thus far. You know. I hope that I continue to get that support while I start this journey. So with that I'll say <clears throat> power ability is activated. <laughs>